Hey everybody, Morptron here. Today is July 7th, 2020, which makes it a Tuesday, a reset day, and also Bungie Day. And Moments of Triumph starts in Destiny 2 today as well. In fact, when you log in, you get this little info box that pops up on your screen. I'll put it up on my video right now. It kind of goes over what we get to do for Moments of Triumph. There's a new title, the MMXX title, which just is 2020. And we have uh, three new emblems to go after, a Sparrow... A title, of course, uh, and some old raid loot as well that has been refreshed. That are, And there's other goodies and stuff for completing the old raids as well. Different emblems, things of that nature, other cosmetics like shaders getting unlocked that are brand new as well. So, other big news for that. Uh, Bungie did release a trailer today, which I will go ahead and play right now. And now that you have seen that trailer, you kind of get an idea of what we have ahead of us. Every single one of the raids has had their power level for their loot increased to current power levels. What that basically means is if you look at something uh, like this forward path auto rifle that was added in the season, if you hover over the power cap or the weapon's power set, it'll say the weapon's current power, its power limit, and the seasonal power cap. So all of the old raid loot has had its power limit increased to 1360, according to Bungie's patch notes. Um, but the old raid loot, unfortunately, that's that's not the case. I don't know if that's just a bug or an error. Uh, but if you go over here to my vault, I'll actually show you um, some old raid loot here. We have this Midnight Coup that I've had just sitting in my vault all, all from year one. Um, and its power cap its power limit is still 1060, so it would not be going on to next season. So I don't know if it's only stuff that you get dropped uh, from now on. I don't know if stuff from Leviathan, like this Midnight Coup, will now have random rolls on it. If it, is, if it does, that's awesome, and I want one. Um, but we'll have to wait and see, because the Midnight Coup, of course, is a 1050 RPM kinetic hand cannon. Although it does have Rampage and Outlaw, I would like to have other stuff on it as well, have it updated to be a, you know, Forsaken and Beyond weapon. Uh, but if we look at something more recent, like this Galron's right hand, uh, this power cap is still also showing 1060. So I don't know if that needs to be updated or if it'll only be new drops from those old raids. Um, and speaking of the older raids, the five oldest raids, so everything besides Garden of Salvation and Last Wish, has had their weekly reward limit removed. And what that means is that you can farm the raids over and over and over and over again within the same week for whatever loot that you want. And if that's the case where all this old raid loot is going to move on in power limit going forward into next season and still be useful, and it's infinitely farmable, that's fantastic. It increases our loot pool exponentially as far as what we have carrying on into next season. The only bad part is you actually have to find a raid group in order to clear those old raids. So that's one hurdle to overcome, I guess, if you don't have a bigger clan. Um, so that's cool. That's cool. You know, old raids have been revitalized. Kind of the same thing that we saw towards the end of Destiny 1. All of the old raids were brought up to, you know, current power cap that sort of thing, and made, you know, revitalized. Um, so we kind of are seeing the same thing this time, and it being the end of Year 3, which would be kind of the end of Destiny 2 going on into Destiny 3, if they still followed that same model. But instead, we're just getting Weapon Sunsetting, and we're getting the Content Vault, so they're taking away some content to make the game smaller, to be able to add in new content that's brand new, kind of like a big, huge release, kind of like, well, Destiny 3. Um, so that's interesting, and I can't wait to see how that all plays out. Um, I don't know if it's just a bug where the old gear, uh, isn't showing a 1360 power cap, and it's showing a 1060 instead. We'll have to see. But the rest of the solar system, of course we have 
the uh, Season of Arrivals complete missions to an end, or means to an end, sorry, for Pinnacle Gear, that is still there. However, the Pyramid Ships, the Contact Public event, has moved to Titan, finally. So that, that'll be good, to have that move on, the storyline progress. And if you actually take a look here, uh, the Pyramid Ships are not only on Io and Titan, they're actually showing on Mars and Mercury as well, but there are no public events for contact on Mars or on Mercury. But they're there, I guess. I don't know, maybe they'll be in the skybox when you look up when you're on those destinations. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, but it's interesting to see the pyramid ships kind of float across the destination screen as they kind of are, well, they're here. They're here now and they're doing stuff. Um, I don't know why they're not in the Tangled Shore or the Dreaming City, as if they're on Mars, they've already passed the Tangled Shore and Dreaming City because those two destinations are on uh, the asteroid belt uh, beyond Mars. So, not sure why they're not there, but maybe they just don't care about the Dreaming City or Tangled Shore. Maybe they only care about planets or moons. Who, you know, who knows? Could be that way. Um, I believe the Flashpoint this week is on Titan as well. Now, the Moments of Triumph starting quest is uh, picked up from Zavala, and the first step is to go talk to Sloan. So that's why I don't know if that's where the Flashpoint is or not. But I'm assuming that it is, because it's not showing anywhere else, um, as it's not showing on the moon. So, nothing else is lit up. So I'm assuming that the, the Flashpoint is on Titan as well. Now let's take a look and see what we have as far as the Ordeal Nightfall this week. We'll go into the Legend if you want to complete the 100,000 uh, Pinnacle. And we're going to do the Festering Core this week, which is an Ordeal uh, that's brand new. And the, the one bad thing I would say about Festering Core is it does not have any Nightfall-specific loot, but it is a fun strike, I have to say. And that's mostly just because... I don't get it all that often in the strike playlist, so being able to have it as an ordeal and have it be the more difficult mode is kind of cool. I, I enjoy that. And we have the Epitaph, which uh, Taken Combatants generate Blight Geysers when defeated. That's that's new. Blight Geysers. Um, we have Baurisk's Breach. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but Void Damage Increased, Knockback Damage, and Distance Increased as well. And we have Unstoppable and Overload Champions, of course, with Match Game and a Locked Loadout as well. Now, the Farmable Nightfalls this week, we have Tree of Probabilities. That gives you the DFA Hand Cannon. That is from Year 1, but it is a Kinetic Hand Cannon of the 140 Archetype. So if you're looking to complete collections, go for it, but it will not be carrying into next season as far as uh, Weapon Sunsetting goes. Same thing goes for Sabathun's Song. This will give you the uh, Auto Rifle Duty Bound, but it is, again, a year one weapon and will not carry on uh, due to weapon sunsetting. The Warden of Nothing gives you the Warden's Law Hand Cannon, which is a 110 RPM hand cannon that will not be carrying on due to sunsetting. But it's also the worst hand cannon in the entire game. So, again, if you're looking to complete collections, go for it. Uh, if not, don't bother. But those are the farmable nightfalls this week. Uh, in Gambit, we do have double infamy rewards, as last week was Iron Banner. So this week is, of course, double infamy, because that's just the way Bungie does stuff, apparently. I don't know, that's just the way that things have been uh, for a while now. So bonus infamy this week, which means double infamy until Friday, and then from Friday until reset, it's triple infamy. So there's that, if you're looking to do stuff for Gambito Prime, as far as infamy goes. Now in the Crucible playlist... The rotators this week, we have Momentum, Control, and Showdown. I know a lot of people have a kind of love-hate relationship with Momentum, Control. A lot of people really like it because of the faster time to kill. Um, and a lot of people don't care for it. I am one of those people that doesn't care for it. So, I don't know. I just don't I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Um, so I'll be sticking to probably Control or Rumble this week. But we have Rumble, Control, Elimination, Survival, and Freelance Survival with Classic Mix down at the bottom, as per usual. And that's what we have there. Now, as far as the Eververse store this week, we do actually have a charity item here, what is called the... Uh, wow, words. Words escape me today. We have the uh, Empathic Shell. 
which is a charity item, like I said. So if you spend the $10 on this, all proceeds are actually going to uh, charity. I believe they're going to the iPads for Kids Foundation or something with the Bungie Foundation where they give iPads to kids in hospitals that are there for long-term care, like cancer patients and things like that. So that's cool. That's kind of what the Bungie Foundation does. They help kids in hospitals. And uh, I'm all for helping kids in hospitals. So there we go. If you're looking to uh, get a little heart ghost shell, looks like a little inflatable balloon. Pretty cool, I, I do got to say. Uh, the, don't, the purchase does go to a good cause. Of course, we do have the Equinox ornament. Now, this is for the brand new exotic, the Ruinous Effigy, uh, which is probably out today, I would assume. That's the only reason why they're selling this weapon ornament. And I'm going to assume that the way that you acquire the Ruinous Effigy is through the quest that starts with Zavala for the Moments of Triumph for this year. Just like Bad Juju was the exotic that we got last year, uh, I'm assuming that is going to be Ruinous Effigy this year. So expect kind of a long drawn out quest for that um, and a, long, a longer, more drawn out quest for the uh, catalyst for that as well. But it'll be nice to get a catalyst for it uh, right away. So that's cool. Uh, stuff that we have available for Bright Dust this week. We have the Dawn of Invention, which was for sale for silver a few weeks ago. Um, but Bright Dust now, and basically your guardian just plays with some bones. That's basically it. Um, yeah, they just, just play with some bones. Uh, we have the uh, Callisto Lancer, which is an exotic ship. Uh, looks pretty damn cool, I gotta say, and is 2,000 bright dust, so I'm just gonna go ahead and purchase that. Dawn of Invention is uh, 3,250. I'm not gonna be spending money or spending bright dust on that. Now, for other Bright Dust items, we have the Lion Guardian Shell. If you fancy yourself a Lion Guardian Shell, there you go. Kind of Titan-themed, I guess. Uh, that is 2,850 Bright Dust. We have the Rim Skipper Sling, which is another cool-looking ship, I do have to say, which was, I think, available for silver prior to this, and that is another 2,000. Uh, I don't care about a ghost shell. We have the Wacky Inflation Emote. I've been waiting for this emote to go on sale for Bright Dust for a long time. Um, well, since the season started. 700 Bright Dust. Yes, please. Thank you. I will be a wacky, waving, and inflatable arm flailing tube man. And we have the Intrepid Exploit Gauntlets. If you did not pick those up uh, in Season of Opulence, like I didn't, you can purchase those for Bright Dust now as well. And another thing for Bright Dust we have is the Peacebringer Weapon Ornament. And this is for the Deathbringer, which I never got. Uh, so I will purchase that as well for 1,250 Bright Dust. Now, as far as uh, stuff in the Flare category, shaders, we have the Bruised Blush, which is kind of like blue and pink. Not my cup of tea. We have Oiled Gunmetal. Pretty good shader, especially for a Titan. You get the kind of like an oiled metal look. Very dark colors, very shiny, very cool, very Titan. Oh, we have the Iridescent Coral, which is very metallic blue. You will uh, not be able to hide. You will definitely stand out in a crowd if you are using Iridescent Coral. Uh, and then we have the Vibrant Medusa. Again, a very bright green. If you want to look like a Lamborghini, there you go. And uh, other shaders we have. I think we had one up in the Featured tab, which was the Welded Brass, which is another very good-looking Titan shader, I do have to say. Um, very dark colors. Again, kind of like a oiled metal type look so very cool very neat um very good stuff so we have a lot of stuff to do this week we have a new exotic to go for the moments of triumph quest line to do we have all of the old raids brought up to current power levels and uh farmable now infinitely farmable so that's cool that's neat um the trick is now just going to be to find a raid team to do those raids, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Maybe Moments of Triumph will bring some people back to do some PvE content, even if it is old. But there we go. That is this week's reset video. I know it's a little bit longer, but we have a lot to cover. We had a lot to cover. Uh, there was a big update. It was about 4.61 gigs on PC, so there is a lot of stuff to do. A lot of little bug fixes. I will leave a link down below to all of those if you want to read it over. I definitely would suggest doing it. 
Uh, they mentioned the fallen guillotine swords, damage getting dialed in a little bit because it was broken. Some old, uh, not really old, some current seasonal triumph uh, quest, not quest, triumph that track things have been fixed that weren't tracking the correct things. Lots of stuff. Link down below if you want to read over all of the patch notes because this video has gone on long enough. If you do want to show your support, hit the like button for me. I would greatly appreciate it. If you are new here, subscribe for more Destiny 2 content. But do not forget to have a good day, everybody, and I will catch you all next time.